that information already saved. So when the CIF Southern Section wants to get information about, uh, you know, someone, what they're rather than asking you those same questions over and over and over again, what they're going to what you're going to be doing is just taking that information that you input that one time. OK, so what we're going to be doing uh, first is going over uh, just kind of the basics of your account uh, and also showing you how you can update that directory information at the same time. OK, so now that we're in our account, let's just kind of go over the basics of what we have here. Uh, when you log in, you should see your name and your school on the top right side. Uh, if you happen to be like a league commissioner or a league officer, you might also see the name of the league up here. Uh, then you're going to have the left navigation bar over here. And what we're going to do in this training is we're going to run through each of these. We'll spend more time on some than others. Uh, and then on the main page or our dashboard, what we try to do is we try to put the most important things up. Uh, so you just one click away from where you need to go. Uh, so what they'll do from time to time is uh, they'll load up this to do list with different tasks that you need to have that you need to accomplish. And once you're done with those tasks, then what you could do is you can go ahead and click mark as complete. And you'll notice that here we have a due date of 8-7 uh, for our membership dues. And we have not done that yet, but when we complete that in our training, then we can go ahead and mark it as complete. Underneath that, we have uh, the transfers area. So it's gonna show your five, five most recent transfers that, that you have either of students that uh, are new to your school that you're trying to obtain eligibility for or some of your previous students who uh, left your school who are trying to get eligibility. Uh, we have a score discrepancy area as well. So one thing that's uh, about CIF Home is that when you're inputting your schedules and scores, they're not shared, meaning that if I schedule a game against you, it's not automatically going to go on that team's schedule. Uh, and same thing with posting scores. Everyone has independent uh, schedules and scores. Uh, when we first created the system back in 2012, I believe, uh, we had uh, shared schedules and scores, and we found out pretty quickly that our users did not like that very much. They preferred to manage their own schedules and didn't like things just popping up on their schedules. Uh, underneath that, we have our notification section. So what the system will do is it will send you a handful of notifications uh, based on action that you might need to take on your account. Uh, or maybe not action, but just kind of some updates on what's been going on, such as uh, transfers that have been submitted to you. Um, sorry, let me close my phone. I did that. Um, and so um, maybe misconducts that uh, had, a, had a ruling on them, etc. cetera. Uh, we have our messages here. So if you have messages that are requiring actions, and then the last thing that we have is our playoff finances section on the very bottom. Uh, and so these will show all the games that uh, you've played in for the year, which are part of the revenue sports, which are going to be basketball, uh, football, and also volleyball. OK, so without further ado, let's kind of go ahead and we'll jump into stuff on the left navigation side. So the message center is pretty much is what it is. You'll be getting messages in here. Uh, when when you have things like uh, transfers that come in, et cetera. Um, but so we don't really need to go over that too often, too much. Uh, if you want to send a specific message to a department uh, at the Southern section, you can do that here and choose that and then send it. That happens to be if you do not auto already know the email addresses of some of the staff members. Um, so underneath that, we have the directory. So we've made a few changes to the directory uh, over the years. We have both our school directory and then we also have our league directory. So let's talk about the league directory first. So the league directory, you'll see, it'll show all the different leagues that we have here. And then you can also use the uh, search bar as well to find the league that you'd like. And then underneath that, uh, once we click it, it's gonna show all of the league officers and their contact information as well as all the sports that they participate in and all of the schools that are that make up that league for each of those sports. OK, so this league is pretty consistent where it has the same schools uh, for all pretty much all the sports. But some of your leagues might have, uh, you know, different schools in them for different sports if there's if they're going to be cross league and in, etc. 
or if there's boys and girls schools. So this could be a good uh, tool to use uh, to see which schools are uh, in your league or, or other leagues um, for that particular sport. Okay, so now let's go over to the school directory. So if we click on the school directory, again, we have the same thing where you can scroll and view the school, or what you could do is you could type in the name of the school and you can click on it and it's going to show the information over here. So you might have noticed that there is some red text that's a little bit different than what was on the league directory. This is uh, the and the text says if your dues invoice has not been created, then your coaches will not populate on the sports directory. So what that means is that if you have not completed your dues, then what will happen is on this right side where it shows all of your coaches information, it'll it'll say does not field sport. OK, so if that happens, make sure that you complete your dues section first and then your coaches should show up. All right. So in the directory. On the top left section, we have all the basic school information uh, here, uh, which uh, shouldn't really change uh, pretty much at all. Um, but if you do need to change it, what you can do is you can come over to black navigation bar, hover over school settings and click under school information. And so here you can see this is where we can update our information for our school. All right, so let's say that we want to adjust our enrollment from 6 to 600. And we can come back to our directory and we can look up our school. And you can see that our enrollment now is 600. OK. And then underneath that, we have all of our uh, athletic faculty, which includes our principal athletic director and other uh, other ones here. Uh, to adjust that, we go to the same place where we come over to the left navigation bar, hover over school settings and click athletic faculty. So this is where you can edit the information. So if personnel changes, you can update that, delete it or edit it. So let's say that we want to change our administrative assistant uh, from Kenny Yamamoto, Yamamoto. And a lot of you guys probably know who he is because if you call our phone line, he most likely is going to be the one answering it. So let's say that we just want to update Kenny's phone number, her, his mobile number. So let's just change that to be this here. And we get it save. And let's say also that uh, we want to get a, we have a new athletic trainer. Uh, so we want to delete our old athletic trainer, Jack Murray. And we want to create a new one, so we'll come over to add new. We'll click add new and then we can put in the other person. And input their information. And make sure that we choose the correct category. OK, so now let's go back to the directory. And look up our school. And then you can see how Kenny's cell has changed and also how we added our new athletic trainer. So that is how you update your athletic faculty. Uh, coaches is a little bit different. All right. So for coaches, what we're going to do is we first will come to school settings. We'll come to coaches. And here you'll see all of our coaches that we have in our coaches database. So the coaches that we have in our coaches database will either be attached to a team or you might notice that they're not attached to a team. So it, when you add a coach and you click add new, let's go ahead and just put in a new coach. And we can put in the information here. And you'll notice that it says mobile number will not be made public and is for CIF use only. Uh, on the directory, uh, if you happen to be a uh, user uh, at a school, you'll be able to see the email addresses for everyone. You will not be able to see the, the cell phone numbers. The reason why I can see the cell phone numbers is because I'm logged in to the uh, uh, administrative panel. And then on the public side, they won't even be able to see the email addresses. They just will be able to see uh, the names of the coaches. So here you can see that we added Barry Bonds as our coach. OK, so what you see Barry Bonds is not attached to a team. So if we were to come over to the directory and look at. Look up our school. And we did a search for Barry Bonds. 
you can see up here, nothing's found. That's because we have not attached them to a team yet. So let's say that uh, Roland Esslinger is no longer going to be our baseball coach, but he's going to be our, um, but we want Barry Bonds to be our baseball coach. So what we would do then instead is we would come to teams, come to baseball, and we can see where it says coaches. You can click add edit coach. We can remove Roland. And then we go to the drop down menu and we choose Barry Bonds. And you notice we do have spots for assistant coaches also. So if you wanted to add new assistant coaches, you can. So now let's go back to the directory and we'll click on buy. And you can see under baseball, not the right school. Oh, you know what? I might need to update my dues. Oh, let's add them to a different sport then. Let's change. Oh, you know what? Okay. So the reason why it says that I am the baseball coach is because when I put in on the splash page, when I was filling out all the different coaches, uh, you, you have a few options to choose, either choose the coach or put uh, coach unknown. Uh, if you put coach unknown, then what it's going to do is it'll automatically put you as the athletic director uh, underneath all of the contacts for that particular sport. So that's kind of done in the system as kind of a trick. So because a lot of times people will want to get through that initial page really quick. Um, so rather than do that, what we wanted to do was kind of punish the people for doing that by uh, logging them in as the coach so that they will receive all the correspondence for that sport, which then in turn would motivate them to uh, adjust, the, uh, adjust the person, okay? So that's probably the reason why that showed up there. So now what we could do is we can go, let me take a look at our dues page really quick and see that we do play baseball. All right, we'll come back to our teams page. Come to baseball. Add Barry Bonds. Okay. And come back to our directory. And hit buy. And, and here you can see there's Barry Bonds right there. Okay. So that is how we fill out our directory. Again, once you go through that initial directory splash page, it should all be done for you. Uh, but if you need to make adjustments, which I'm sure you're going to throughout the year, especially as personnel changes, that's how you make the adjustments to your coaches uh, and also your athletic faculty. All right, so what I'll do now is I'm just gonna pause and I'm just gonna take a look at the chat and see if we have any questions that have not been answered. So let me just look that. Uh, okay, just a question about if you'll have access, and so it's saying that this is going to be recorded. Um, uh, if there's someone in my user manager that is no longer with my school, uh, how can I delete them? Yeah, and Sharon says I'll be going over that, and that is going to be the next thing we go over. Okay, can you add sport physicals with expiration alerts per player on the team page? Uh, you, you can do that on CIF Home, uh, but on our other program, Home Campus, which is connected to it, would allow you to keep track of your expirations and you would get alerts. Okay, and that looks like that's the last question that we had, so let's go ahead and move into the next then. So, since we're going over our school settings and there was a question about uh, users, uh, what we'll go over next is the user manager. Okay, so the key distinction between users and coaches is that users will actually have accounts. Okay, coaches, they might have accounts, they might not. It's all up to you at your school. So if you wanted to have a coach that you trusted and maybe create an account for them, then what you can do is you can add a user account for them. Uh, if you have coaches that you don't want to have access to this, then you do not need to have create a user account for them. Uh, in order to create a user account, though, we would come up here and click Add New. Um, but all of these ones that we have here are our current users on our account. 
Now, what we want to do is we really want to try to tighten up the amount of users that we have, and we want to default on the side of giving permissions to only what they need access to. We don't want to give people access to things they don't need access to, um, especially when it comes to internet uh, security and privacy. Uh, that's, that's a big thing that we want to make sure that we do is not give them more than they need, okay? Um, and so we can always scale it up if we need to, if they if there's something that they get, they get new responsibility, et cetera. All right, so if we come over here and we might notice that some of our users have a red X next to delete and some have a lock, all right? Now the difference is, is that we do keep track of uh, everything that actions and forms that get submitted by each user. And so if we happen to have a user that submitted a form that did something on their account, then it actually will have that lock next to them, meaning that we can't fully delete them. However, what we can do is we can still block their access. All right. So to block their access. So let's say that we have this test user right here that no longer is with our school and we want to get rid of them. What we do is we come to the edit icon. And then what we do is under status, we change it from active to block. OK, and if you want also, you could also uh, make sure that all of their permissions are removed as well. That really won't matter, though, because we're already blocking their account. So if they log in, then they will not. If they try to log in, it will not allow them. All right. So by doing that, what that does is that make sure that they have no access. All right. And if you want to see all your blocked users, you can click block and then you can see there's our test user right there. OK. Another thing to note is that if you happen to be creating a user uh, that it's coming from a different school but retains the same email address, uh, you will have to contact the CIF Southern Section Office to get their account moved from one school to another. All right, because what will happen is if you attempt to add them as a new user, it will say that their account already exists. So a lot of times uh, we'll have somebody that moves from one school to another but retains the same district email. Uh, in that case, you would have to contact the office uh, so they could actually move it from one school to another. All right, but let's go ahead and add a new account. So we'll click add new. We'll put in the email address of the person. And then we could put in a password. So we actually are putting in the password for the user. This is what they're going to use when they first log in. After that, what they can do is they can change their password by just coming over here and clicking on change password. So let's just throw in a password real quick. And we have this little eye icon, which will show what that password is. We'll put in the user. And we can skip down. And we can choose the user type. So school admin and school user. Uh, the difference is the school administrator will have the ability to change people's passwords on their accounts. Uh, and we really only want to have our most trusted uh, users be school administrators. The rest of them will be school users. So let's just make this one a school user. They're going to be active. And then you'll see we have a bunch of checkboxes here that says permission modules and then it says allow access so if we check off the box that's going to give them access to that specific thing so what you'll notice is that all of these items over here pretty much match all of the different items that we have on the left navigation bar so if we wanted to give let's say our finance clerk a uh, access to let's say dues we would check off dues and then under the finance tab they would be able to see dues OK, so try to do your best at giving the permissions uh, to the people that uh, only need that specific module. So if you have a uh, if you have a coach that doesn't need to see uh, anything related to finances, make sure you don't give them permission to those things. OK, so let's just pretend that we have uh, a coach here. And let's say that we want to give them access to, we don't want to give them access to, to athletic faculty because they could change all that stuff. Um, let's just say that we want to give them access just to maybe freelance petition if they, uh, if they want to be considered, actually, no, that would be at large petition, my mistake. Uh, and then we will do the Teams page and maybe that's it, okay? 
So then we go ahead and click I agree and then click save. OK, so then you can see here's the user that we just added right there. So if we come back, we can always change the user's permissions, give them access to more things or give them access to less things. It's totally up to you at your school, depending on the trust level and confidence that you have uh, in your staff. All right. So that's how we add users and manage our users under the user manager. All right. So I'm just going to go and check the chat real quick and see if we have any questions on that. Uh, OK, let's see. Wow. OK. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay. The home campus number on the website does not work. Is there a more direct telephone number? Uh, the phone number, okay, it looks like it was put in 562-206-2486. Let me see. The, our number should... Oops. It's not there. So if you want, if you went to our support website, you can see that. OK, let's see. Is it better to delete them if they are no longer active? If you can delete them, I would delete them if they if they've never used their account. But if they if they're no longer there, then uh, then you just would you should just uh, uh, if they have a lock on them and they're no longer there, then what you should do is you should just make them uh, inactive by blocking them. OK, it looks like we're good on questions then, so we'll move to the next one. All right, so the next thing that we have is transfer forms. And so um, especially at this time of year, uh, although maybe not as uh, we're not going to be using that quite as much as we would on normal years, um, but this is something that you know we will be spending a lot of time in. So if we click on the transfer forms here, we'll see uh, a bunch of different uh, transfers that we have on our account. You will notice that some are in green and some are in red. The ones that are in green are going to be the ones that we have submitted or that are our that are our students at our school now that came from another school that we're trying to obtain eligibility for. The ones that are in red are going to be the ones that left our school and they're trying to obtain eligibility at another school. OK, so the way the transfer system works is that whoever is the school, uh, whoever is the school of the, the new school of the student, uh, has to submit the transfer request. When they submit the transfer requests, what they're going to be doing is indicating all of the former schools that the student went to, and then those former schools will have to review the form and reply uh, to that form, and then and only then will it go to the CIF Southern Section's office. Once it gets to their office, then they can review the form, ask if they if you they need more information. Um, ask you to upload additional files if needed, and then finally make a determination on the transfer. OK, so that's the basic workflow for transfers. So let's walk through it as if we are a school uh, setting up a transfer. So let's click on add new. All right. Now, before we decide uh, what transfer type that we are going to use, whether it's going to be a domestic student or foreign student, let's take a look at these worksheets. OK. So the worksheets, the first one we have is the athletic director worksheet. Now the athletic director worksheet, uh, this is not a requirement for you to upload with the transfer, uh, but this is something that can be used as you're gathering information uh, for uh, that particular student. So maybe if you're having a meeting with the parent and the student after you found out that they have transferred from a new school, uh, these are some questions that you can that you can ask them that will help prepare you for when you're filling out the transfer form. OK, so we have a worksheet both for domestic students, which is the first one, and then we have a worksheet also for foreign exchange, since obviously there's going to be different questions that we ask for the foreign exchange students. All right. Underneath that, we have the parent student certification form. So the parent student certification form actually does have to be signed by the parent and the student. All right. So this is them basically saying they agree to the terms uh, that are in the certification of application. All right. Now, this one does have to be uploaded with each of your transfers that you submit. All right. Now, also be sure that they sign one of the two, either six or seven. They don't have to sign 
uh, they don't have to sign both of them. Because if they're signing both of them, it's actually they're actually contradicting themselves. Right, so we have a certification for normal domestic transfers. We also have a certification for foreign exchange. You can see that it's similar. OK, and then what we have is we have the valid change of residence document checklist. Now, this is this is new. I believe that it was this was uh, first out last year where if, if your student is if you're applying for a valid change of residence uh, using that transfer type, then what you're going to have to do is you have to fill out this form, uh, which uh, is basically saying that I've done my due diligence, making sure that the student has uh, has certainly moved and they're not, you know, faking it. Um, and you can do your, put your initials here and then once you're done with that, you can upload that with the valid change. All right. And then a new addition is this transfer flow, this transfer flow chart that we have. Now the transfer flow chart is, is, is a nice uh, decision uh, tree, which will, which can help you make a determination on what transfer type to submit. OK, so it'll ask you a question Then, if it, the answer is yes, then you move down. If the answer is no, then you move this way and so on and so forth until it gets you to the place where you will decide which transfer type uh, that you should apply for. Now, this is a really, really useful, uh, useful uh, document that they put together here. All right, so. Let's go ahead and fill out one of these transfer types. So let's go ahead and do the valid change of residence. So with a valid change of residence, and if we compare this to some of the other forms, you'll see that it's pretty similar, except for we just asked a slightly different questions depending on the transfer type that it is. So let's go back to the valid change and we'll start the form. So you can either choose your student. So if we choose the student, uh, this option is available uh, if you happen to be using our sister product home campus uh, and you use it for uh, online athletic uh, registrations, then what it'll do is it will actually save all of the students information that they registered with online. And we do have a list of questions that will help determine if they are a transfer student and which kind of transfer student that they are. And so if um, if you happen to be using that, then the students will actually be pre filled in here. Uh, and we actually even do have a feature that can help start the transfer process um, once we have determined that they are a transfer student. Now, uh, it won't submit the transfer for you, but what it'll do is it'll help kickstart the process uh, and fill out some of the forms for you so it'll cut down on that data entry time. All right, so let's go ahead and continue filling this information out. Okay, now we're gonna have to check off this box essentially saying that we reviewed the uh, certification of valid residence change, indicate the public high school district that they're in. Now you have to put this information in even if you are a private school. First date that the student has attended school and or practice. We're not practicing right now, so it must be the, the first day of school. The former address. Date the entire family unit has moved when they vacated. We have a question that says, has the student attended your school prior to this transfer? So that would be uh, an ABA transfer, meaning that they were at your school, they went to another school, and then they came back to your school. So uh, if you do that, then you click yes, and then you would put in the you would put in the dates that they attended your school in the first place. OK, that's a rare one, so we're not going to do that. Then we have the former high schools. So the former high schools, you'll notice that we have one that has an asterisk next to it, and then we have four others that do not. So you're only going to want to indicate the schools that uh, the student went to before your school. OK, so if you have just one, you're going to fill out this one right here and you're going to leave the rest blank. Just because they're there does not mean that you have to fill out those forms. Only indicate the ones that they have used before. So when we click on the drop down for former high school, you'll see that it says select school or it says non CIF SS school. If we click select school, then it'll show all the different schools that are within the southern section. And what we can do is we could type in the name of our school that they attended before, and then we can fill out the rest of the 
the rest of the information for that school and their attendance dates. OK, so but if they're not in the southern section, then what you can do is click on this non CIFSS school and then you'll notice that you can either fill in the information for that school or you can click select school. Now, if you click select school, we do have all the other sections uh, from the uh, CIF in here. Uh, we actually do need to add the central section because uh, all of these uh, sections will also be using uh, CIF home as well. So let's just choose that. And you can choose the school and you'll notice that what it does is it pre-fills all that information out for you since we already have that. So you don't so you don't need to uh, look up that information. I'm going to change this though just because I don't want that actually to go to that athletic director. We'll throw in our attendance okay. dates. Awesome. Put in the sports that they participated in, in the last 12 uh, calendar months. Indicate if there's been a grading period or not. And then we're going to agree to uh, the certification of applications above. We have a note section. So you can put any additional information that you think that the CIF should know uh, uh, that could help with the decision process. And then we up upload our uh, our certification form and also our valid change of residence checklists. Okay. Uh oh, what happened? OK, sorry, my screen went away and then we'll put in the online signature of the person that's filling this out. OK, so what we could do is we can either save the transfer or we can submit it. Uh, saving the transfer is a good idea if you don't have all the information, uh, but you want to get the process started and you want to start filling out some of the form. If you do that, then what you can do is you can fill out what you know, click save and then come back to it another time. Once we have everything done, you can click submit, though. But clicking save will not send it to the other schools. All right, so you can see that now we're brought to our transfer case manager where it'll, it'll show us where we're at in the process. So you can see that obviously we've already submitted it. Uh, it says not complete under the former school approves or disputes to current requests. And then you can see that our uh, the, the status that we are at is the pending former school has not replied yet. OK, so in a case where we have multiple former schools, what we could do is we could take a look at that form and we could scroll down to the bottom where it has the former school's re response and you can see that none of them have filled it out yet. OK, so but that it will still say pending former school only if one of them has done it. All right, so what I'm going to do first uh, now is I'm going to go in as the, uh, the other school and fill out the requests. So I'm just going to jump in as Lucerna High School. OK. And since I'm in as Lucerna High School, here you can see there is that request that we just had. And you can see it says pending former school. Uh, you will be getting an email notification as well, uh, letting you know that you have a uh, transfer request at that school. Uh, and one thing that uh, the CIF office says lots of time is to practice good transfer karma, meaning you would like to uh, reply to your trans your, your transfers as as you would like others to reply to yours. So when you get one, uh, try your best to fill out the information as soon as you can. So you can come over here and click view and edit. And so under the view edit, you'll see that all of the information in blue is the information that was filled out by the former school, uh, which was us doing it in this transfer. OK, so then after we review that, we can click next and then we can answer some questions for uh, uh, when the student was at our school. OK, so we can say if they're eligible or not. If there is uh, disciplinary action taken, you can say yes or no. If you say yes, then you're going to put in some explanation. And then indicate the sports what the student's GPA was when they were at our school. And then you can put in uh, if you agree or do not agree with information input by any of the schools. Now, a lot of times people will get uh, transfers and they dispute it uh, and they don't 
uh, and they don't agree with the information that was input. So what people will do is they'll sit on that. We ask that you don't sit on it. If you don't agree with it, you can simply say that you do not agree and then give an explanation. So in this case, if we know for a fact that the student did not uh, change, their whole, their whole family unit did not change, uh, then we can put no and we can say, uh, sister still lives with uncle or something like that. And then we can put in our online signature and click save. Okay, so now we have uh, that school, which is filled it out. So let's go back to our initial school that we're doing the test for and log in. Wes? And take a look. Yes. Hello? Never mind. Never mind. Okay, so let's go back into that transfer form. Uh, and so you can still see that it says pending former school's response. So the reason why it says that is because we had two former schools and you can see just one has been filled out. So the other one is from Burlingame, which is not inside the southern section. So what happens when they're outside the section is there will an email will get sent to the email address that you input here and it will be giving them a link uh, to uh, view the information for the transfer form. And then what you can do is they can fill it out. They can fill it out on their end. If they say that they did not receive it, then what you could always do is you can come back into the form and you can copy and paste the link and then you can send it to them in an email. And so what we generally would like, what we generally uh, tell people to do, especially for the transfers that are outside the section, is to, once you submit the form, go ahead and get on the phone and give a call to the former school. And once you get that person on the line, you can say, hey, I am, sending you a transfer i'm in the cif southern section uh one of your former students is is trying to obtain eligibility at our school and um if you could just review the information and fill out the form for when the student was at your school it should just take you a couple minutes uh so we can get the student plan uh usually that uh can help out in the process and speed up the process when um for all the former schools to reply to your transfer requests all right so Let's go over the other parts of this. So underneath the case status is we have the notes and decision dates. So the notes and the decision date will be input by the CIF Southern Section staff. Uh, so examples of notes lots of times would be if you did like a sit out period request, uh, they're giving you the dates that that student will be able to participate and play in their first game. And they'll indicate the date that they made that decision. Uh, messages. Messages, you notice that you cannot send a message or you cannot initiate messages to any of the parties. Uh, the section office will be the only ones that can initiate messages. Uh, a lot of times they'll be initiating messages to ask uh, for additional information. So maybe they want transcripts included or just any, any additional thing that is uh, important for this transfer. Uh, in that case of that, what's gonna happen is you will be getting an email uh, prompting you to log back into your account and then coming to the transfer and then replying to it here. Uh, the reason why we do that is because we want to keep all of the information for that student's transfer on one page. Uh, we want to make it really easy for all the information to be in one spot so we can access it. Uh, so when they're making a determination, they do not have to rummage through papers or anything like that. Underneath that is the file section. Uh, and so the, so oftentimes they might ask you to upload an additional file uh, in that area. You can title it and then you can choose the file uh, on your computer and then upload the file. OK, so that is the whole transfer process in a nutshell. Uh, we went through that relatively quickly. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is jump over to the chat section and see what kind of questions we have. All right. All right, let's go. OK, so let's see. OK, one of the questions was, where do you find the pre-generated transfer info in home campus? So what you'll do is, is uh, you can activate a column uh, under uh, your clearances, at that one that says transfers. And then for that, what uh, it'll do is it'll indicate the kids that are transfer students. And then what you can do is you can click on their detail 
and there's a little button there that says start transfer process. And so when you do that and you come back to your CIF home account, you'll have a transfer that um, <clears throat> you'll have a transfer in your uh, case manager on this page here. And it will say rather than saying pending former school response, it will say pending AD action, meaning that you'll need to look at it and then submit it. OK. Is the process the same for someone coming out of the state? Yes. I see Mike answer that. And also Reiner gave some information. Is the dispute section where we would write if we know that a player followed a high school coach? Yes. OK, answers. Wes, you're no longer sharing your screen. People can see my screen now, though, right? Give me a thumbs up, somebody. No? Can't see my screen? Oh, sorry. How about now? OK. Oh, it's sorry. Good. OK, sorry about that. OK. OK, cool. Um, all right, When uh, is there anything else I should go over since you can see my screen for a little bit, or is everyone pretty much good to go? OK, here's a question. It says, if a student played JV, never varsity, do they still have to sit out? Uh, I'll let one of the sport administrators answer that question. And they said yes. Can you review the H the can you review in the home campus information retrieval for a transfer? Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, you can view the information the questions that, that that were answered uh, in that area uh, just on their student detail. Uh, and then but it, it's not really going to hurt to to push the transfer forward because it's not going to it's not going to start the transfer. It's just going to save the information there. And you can choose to ignore it if you want uh, once it's on CIF home, or you can use that information to to submit the transfer. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move forward with the next one. So the next thing that we have is teams. So teams, um, <clears throat> you'll notice that it has only varsity. Uh, if you wanted to keep track of your, your teams on lower levels, then you always could use our uh, other product on campus, uh, which will keep track of this stuff for uh, for your lower levels, uh, but the varsity stuff will always be exchanged back and forth. So this is going to show all the teams that you have uh, available to participate in within the CIF Southern section. Uh, we can click on the sport and then it's going to show you uh, some information about that team. Uh, you can go back and look at previous year's data if you'd like by changing the year so you could see how you did in previous seasons. We'll go back to the other season. Uh, you can update your team picture, uh, your team history, and then we went over how to update coaches. Uh, we also have a, a roster section where you could add your roster. Uh, so the roster and the team picture will be uh, required to input if you are going to be making the playoffs. If you make the playoffs, then they use this information uh, to help fill out the, um, the program. OK, so for rosters, so there's going to be a few different ways that you can add your roster. You can either click on this button to click add players one by one. So you can in input their information here and this is going to be sports specific information. So you can see this is a baseball one. So you can see that we have uh, all these different baseball positions such as designated hitter, first base, second base, outfield, pitcher, etc. And then all the other information here. You can do that way, or what you can do is you can um, you can import your roster from an Excel file, and we provide a sample for you here. Uh, or you could choose them from your student directory. Uh, or what you could do is you, if you happen to use Home Campus and the uh, athletic clearance module as they register for the sport, you can give your coaches access to put them on appropriate teams, and they'll show up here. Then underneath that, we have all of our schedules and scores and the schedules for our away games are going to be in red and our home games are going to be in blue. So let's go ahead and start adding some schedules. So if we click on add game, it's going to pre-fill our team that we have. We'll indicate our date and time, our location, home away or neutral, the game type that we have, 
and you'll notice that we have wildcard and we have state and regional. Um, the CIF Southern section uses a power ranking system to doing their to be doing their to do their divisional placements. And so what that uses is it uses a combination of their playoff performance in years past, uh, the strength of schedule and also their win loss percentage. And so there's a formula for each addition, each sport, which will total up and give an average per game. And based on where you fall in those rankings, we'll put you in a specific division. So the reason why I'm saying that in this spot is because uh, each of these games can be totaled differently. So if you're a, a playoff, you will be getting a bonus for that particular game. And if it's a wild card game, that's different than being in the playoffs. So if you have a play, if you have a game where you have to play into the playoffs, you'll have to choose wild card first rather than just playoffs. And then if you have a really good team where you actually make it to the state uh, regional tournament, you'll want to make sure that you choose state and regional. The reason why is again just because all of these things will be totaled differently in in the power rankings. All right, and so we'll click select opponent. So for select opponent for our drop down menu, we'll have CIF schools. Now this will include all CIF schools, which are in all different sections. OK, so you'll notice that we have some LA schools. We'll add one from San Diego or we'll click select opponent and you can go other schools. So the other schools will actually be a database of schools uh, throughout the country. So we can add one that we played with in uh, the Key West in Florida, let's just say. All right. And then what you can do is we can either click save event and it'll save that event or we can click the save and copy button. And we, when we click save and copy, what it'll do is it'll retain some of those fields and then we can just put in the other information here. So for the CIF Southern section home, uh, we have uh, limited information that we input. Uh, if you wanted to keep track of other things like your dismissal depart times, uh, and uh, facilities, uh, then you can use the sister sister product, which is home campus, uh, which will integrate with with CIF home at the same time. So if we go back now to our team page for baseball, here you can see there's that game that we just added. All right. Now, if to input a score, we'll click the post result button. We can indicate if we won, lost, or tied. And then we can in input our score. And then we also have a note section. So the note section is used for sports like volleyball. So if we happen to put set scores in, uh, we what that would look like, it would be put something like this. So we can say like, okay, we won the first set, 25-23. And the next one, let's say we lost 22-25 and so on and so forth. Uh, also, you can use this uh, for tiebreakers in soccer. So if there's penalty kicks, you can say that, that you want, let's say that you won and the score was two to two, then you can say penalty kicks. You can say by had nine and tests had five. I'm not sure exactly how many are used for soccer. So excuse me if that's wrong, I'm sure it is. And then you can hit save, okay? You notice that what it does is it adjusts our overall record and also our league record, okay? Another thing that you might have seen on this page is it says that an opponent has not entered your score yet. So what we have is we do check for score discrepancies. Uh, so if your opponent has already had the result entered in, it will show up here. And on the very home page that we went over at the start, we do have a score discrepancy area where it will show all the scores that don't match up with what that other uh, school, that other school had input. Okay. So that's our team section. So I'll just pause for a second and I'll take a look at some of the questions that we might have. OK. OK, let's see. Wes, can you please tell, oops, it moved, the group that all sports are preloaded if you don't offer at your school is OK. These are just in place to use. They can't be deleted. Um, yeah, so what I was saying was that on the team page, these are just preloaded in for you. 
um, if, if you don't use it, then that's fine. You, you, you can ignore it. Just like the eligibility roster for playoffs, we can create an Excel spreadsheet to upload the games without having to do them one by one. Uh, we do have an option on home campus to upload uh, your roster if, if you want. Uh, the, it will uh, integrate with uh, Scorebook Live. We're working, uh, we've done some work with that uh, for schedules. Um, and so what you can do is you can, uh, the, the data that's there will go over. Um, okay, that looks like it's right. Reiner put an emphasis in to make sure that you have your opponent's names correct. Uh, not just the name of the tournament or TVA. Opponent schools need to be developed in order to put an accurate uh, point for the uh, power rankings. So let's go ahead and look at the power rankings real quick. This allows you to take a look at your power rankings for uh, your school uh, and what your results have been. So obviously, you this is a test school, so it's only going to show some stuff that we had but it'll show you a breakdown of how many points that you created uh, for each one of those games. Uh, and so lots of times if you have zero, the zero will show up if you uh, put in a school, uh, maybe you typed in the school's name, which actually you can't do that anymore. Uh, we took that away. Or if you just put in the name of the tournament, et cetera. All right. We do have another option, which is the score poster, uh, which can be a useful tool that allows you to post uh, a lot of different scores at once. So let's just go ahead and I'll put in a pretty wide date range. So what you could do is maybe you come back in after uh, a weekend and you can uh, put in the dates from Friday to uh, Sunday and it'll show all the different scores that need to be filled out for uh, all the games that are played over the weekend. Then what you could do is you could just easily put in what the wins, losses, and ties were for each of those games and just click save. So it's pretty easy to uh, fill those out. And to make it even easier, what you could do is you could click on the show blank scores only and then click search and it'll only show the ones that you have not filled out. So that can be a useful tool. All right. All right. So what we're going to go over next is the misconduct manager. So the misconduct manager, this will, I'm going to go ahead and get into a different school that already has some misconducts. I'll just keep going back to my alma mater, Lacerna. So what happens in the misconducts is, let's say that you have a student or a um, or a coach that gets uh, kicked out of a game or has you know some sort of uh, misconduct. Uh, what will happen there is the official will go on to the system and they will uh, put information about that particular uh, incident. And then what will happen is that gets sent to uh, an area liaison who then can interpret the rule, make sure everything that the official put put in was correct, uh, and then it will be moved forward uh, to both the school and also to the sudden section office. Now, each of your misconducts uh, might require different actions. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at some misconducts. So you'll be getting them, and this is perfect. We'll want our, our goal is always to have all the misconducts say completed. Uh, if they're not completed, then it could result in some forfeitures of games. Um, so if we click on edit, it's going to show the information that was filled out by the official. It'll have a reason for rejection right here, and these reasons for rejections change based on the sport. And then you're going to want want to pay attention to the information that's in red because that's going to uh, let you know what your action should be. OK, so what we do is we highlight the ones that are going to need additional action. So here you can see that it says that uh, player ejection with an asterisk, any um, misconduct ejections marked with an asterisk require a post ejection return to complete form uploaded in this case uh, prior to the student rejoining uh, it, your team in competition. So what that's going to force you to do is come down to the school action and then you will download the post ejection form. So what this post ejection form is, it's a form that you can use when uh, the student is having a meeting with the principal. Uh, it's basically saying that, yes, we have put in a, a course of action to help um, you know, curb the student's behavior. Uh, and then what has to happen is you, you upload that 
and then indicate if it's the first or first ejection or not, and then put in the dates of uh, that the that the student has sat out. Now, before, uh, if it wasn't their first ejection, they would have to put in two different dates. Uh, what's changing this year, and where they're going to be. Uh, they might have to set out as many as six different games, okay? So that's not in the system yet. Not a big deal because we're not playing any games right now. But when the games start getting played and and uh, and kids start getting kicked out of games, which I know nobody on this call will have any students that have kids kicked out of games, I'm sure. Um, but look for having more additional dates that you have to input that. Once you've submitted that, the CIF Southern section will review the form and uh, they will complete. They will complete the misconduct, and uh, then you will be good to go. And your job is done when it comes to misconducts. Okay. Let me jump over to chat. All right. Let's see. What we have. Okay. Reiner just added something saying that post ejection form is only required for the ejections involving violent conduct and fighting. Okay. Cool. No questions. All right, the next thing that we have is our sanction event form. Uh, sanction event form, you're going to be using this if uh, you're going to be hosting a tournament. Okay, so here you can see all the different tournaments that this particular school has hosted. And if you're hosting a tournament, you do have to gain approval from uh, the CIF Southern section. So not only does it do this, but what it also will do once it's approved is it will go on the, the public website. Under governance, you can see sanction events, and it'll show a list of all of the tournaments that are being played that have been approved in the southern section. Okay, so not only uh, you getting it approved, but you're also getting the word out a little bit more about your tournaments. So coming back to this, let's go. Let's go ahead and click add new. Here, it's going to be putting in information for uh, your tournament, and. Uh, what it might get approved automatically based on this question. So if you're if you do not have any schools that are going to be participating that are part of border states. Now border states also include Hawaii and uh, I think Alaska too. Maybe not Alaska. Yeah, it does. Alaska. Uh, then um, if you do have schools that are not those border ones, then you're going to have to fill out an additional form. Uh, and upload it. Uh, that's provided by the NFHS. And then after that's happened, then it can be approved. All right. OK, so next we'll go over the finances. So dues. All right. So we mentioned earlier about how uh, your. OK, you know what? I'm going to just kind of pause one second because this is making me nervous about my battery. Hold on about one minute as I plug my computer in. OK, we have power. <clears throat> OK, so we talked about the dues uh, or we alluded to it a little bit earlier uh, where we said that if your dues aren't filled out, then your coaches will not show in your directory. Um, so the dues, uh, you have to be paid every year. <clears throat> and so. <clears throat> so what you're going to want to do is indicate the sports that you pay that you play at your school for this current year. So let me just go ahead and delete all these start over so I can show you what it looks like from the start. Because the dues don't automatically get filled out for you. You have to do them each year. So you're probably going to come to the dues and see this, OK? <clears throat> So what you can do is you can either choose the sports from the drop down menu and click add. Or and this is what we suggest that you do. 
because it's a lot quicker, you can click copy from previous year. So if you copy from previous year, what it's going to do is it's going to take all the sports that you indicated that you played last year and put it on your invoice for this year. <clears throat> Once you fill that out, you can come over to the button over here that says view invoice and you can see all of the sports and it'll give you your total amount. Once you've paid, it will indicate what your payment is and it'll affect your balance due. Okay. <clears throat> now, a thing to note is that you always can add sports later on uh, throughout the year. <clears throat> so let's say that you're not sure if you're going to play baseball or not because you don't know if you have enough players to fill the team. If mid-year you decide that you are going to be put, put, playing baseball, then what you could do is you can come in here, choose baseball, and what it'll do is it will change the total for your invoice. So let's add a couple more. Just so we can show you what it looked like. So you can see that what would happen is it would show a balance. So then what you could do is you could print that invoice, that new invoice and pay the difference on the balance. Okay. So not only do we have section dues, but we also have state dues as well. Uh, the state dues can be paid through the CIF Southern Section website as well. If we click on hover or finances and we click on CIS state dues, theirs is going to be based off of an enrollment factor. And I believe it's 88 cents per student. So what you can do is you can update your enrollment, click save dues, click view invoice, and then it's going to uh, show uh, you the invoice, which you can print, uh, give the finance clerk uh, who can make a payment. All right. All right, and then the other part for finances, we have a game management form. Uh, game management forms are used if you're going to be hosting a playoff event uh, and you're gonna be having some additional expenses that you want to get approval for. Uh, so a lot of times uh, this will be for things like renting a, um, a different venue that's going to be charging uh, a, a dollar amount. Uh, if it's gonna be over the top, then uh, it's always going to be a good idea to fill out this information first to make sure it gets approved before you do that. Okay. Okay, and then the other one that we have, uh, we have a GoFan ticket info, which is just going to be a list of videos for your online ticketing. Uh, playoff finances. This is going to show all of the games that uh, your school has participated in the playoffs for for those uh, revenue sports, which are football, basketball, and volleyball. So when it comes time, whether or not you're going to be the visiting team or the host team, you're still going to have to input the data. Uh, if you're a visiting team, you will have to put in your travel time uh, or your miles that, that you traveled round trip, and it'll give you a factor that will be deducted from the amount of money that has to, get, has to be paid, uh, and then indicate the uh, tickets that you sold. So oftentimes the visiting team won't sell any tickets, but in some cases they will. Uh, then the host team at that point will be able to go in and fill out their form. Uh, and so the host team will indicate how many tickets they sold and some of their expenses. And once they're done with that, what it'll do is it'll give them a spit out of the overall total of the game and how much uh, revenue was made uh, and how much is going to be shared with the other school and how much is going to be shared with the CIF Southern section. Uh, you'll notice also that it it tell, it'll tell you how many uh, tickets need to be returned to the CIF Southern section. Uh, they do do ticket allocation for playoffs as well uh, and do keep track of how many tickets were allocated uh, year in and year out. So they have a pretty good idea of how many tickets that uh, they should be giving for each one of your games. So the idea of this is just to make it really simple so you have a breakdown of the game and it'll tell you exactly how much money uh, is owed back to the CIF based on the profit split, how much money is owed to the other school. Okay. So now that we went over all the finance stuff, let's just take a quick pause break and see if we have any questions. Okay, Qu one question, do you have to pay dues online? Uh, and then Brianna says dues must be paid by check and sent to the Southern Section office. 
and the invoice is created online. Okay. All right, and then the same thing, the same thing for uh, these games too. That still will have to come uh, to the CIF seven section office via check. Okay. All right, so now we're kind of getting towards the end, and we're going to kind of roll through some of these smaller forms. Uh, previews and bulletins. Uh, this is just where uh, the section office can upload some of the previews for the seasons coming up and bulletins that come up. The forms area, uh, you can see that we have a whole lot of different forms. We'll run through these ones quickly. At large petition. The at large petition is going to be used if we had a good season uh, and we're not one of the automatic bids uh, in our league for playoffs or we happen to be a freelance team uh, that is not part of a league. What we want to do for that is we would just simply want to choose the sport that we want to be considered as uh, um, an at-large petition into the playoffs. So that way we can click add and then uh, that lets the CIF Southern Section Office know that uh, that our school would like to be considered for playoffs for this sport for this particular sport. But it, you'll, you'll note that it says to please make sure that your schedules and scores and rosters are updated. Uh, if that information is not updated, it's not really going to help you much because that information is necessary to be determined if you're going to be in the playoffs or not. OK. Uh, code of ethics. So this is just going to be um, something that you can provide to the, the parents and the students and the pre participation forms. Um, that can be signed before they play. We have these all preloaded in our athletic clearance system. Athletic contract. So this is just a sample contract that can be used uh, when you have an event between two schools. Uh, we have uh, templates for this in our uh, in our home campus system that get pre-filled based on the events that you input and the data that you input for the game. Seabeds form. Seabeds form is going to be uh, indicating uh, some information about how many students that you have per grade. Uh, and this is information that gets submitted, and this is something that uh, gets used every year. I think it's due in October usually. Coaches code of ethics, that's similar to the athletic code of ethics, but it's for coaches. Coaches wanted. So uh, coaches wanted is something that you can use if you have a vacancy. Uh, for a coaching position. So let's say that you need a new football coach or basketball coach, et cetera. This is where you can advertise for that. So what you can do is you can click add new, fill out information uh, for the coach that you need and the details for it and who to contact. And then it's gonna show up on your CIF Southern section account. And it will also show up on your, the classified section, I believe, or no, just under governments under coaches wanted. So it will show here. So just like coaches wanted, we also have a games wanted section right here, which acts very similarly. Um, and here's a good example of one right here uh, where and, and I'm sure that this will be used a lot uh, since our schedules have all been kind of thrown up into the air, uh, especially for football, where ones where this school is asking uh, if anyone else has a uh, week 10 option for playing. Once you filled this out again, that'll go on the Southern Section public website as well as on your CIF home accounts. You can search for them if you'd like. So let's say that we're looking for football. You can input the dates as well. Click search and when you find something that looks good, you can click on let's play. And then it'll connect you directly with the person that filled out that form. All right. So I expect this to be a feature that's used quite a bit, especially this year. OK, football 14 year old form. So this is where you're going to indicate all of the freshman 14 year olds that are playing varsity. You simply input input their names, their grades and their date of births and click add new. So you can see this school's already done that. Football practice zero week. Uh, so for this, what you're going to do is indicate uh, for football, your first practice, if you have a zero week game and the date of the zero week game and who the opponent is, and then indicate uh, which week is your bye week. Because if you play a zero week game, you're going to have to have a bye week. 
freelance petition. So a freelance petition uh, works very similarly to the at-large petition, uh, but the freelance petition is if your school wants to be added uh, to, um, to be a freelance team, meaning that you're not part of the league. Um, so if you're not part of a league, but you are a member of the CIS Southern section, you wanna be considered for the playoffs and get freelance uh, access, then what you can do is you could add the sport click add and again it's going to tell you that to make sure that your schedules and scores and rosters are updated and then once this is input the cif southern section will receive the notification and they will approve or deny your request uh, to be uh, considered as a freelance team so again that's only to be used if you are not in a league for a particular sport we went over games wanted Playoff entry. The playoff entry section is only going to be uh, used if you happen to be a league officer or a league coordinator uh, to put in the details for the details for how you finished in your league for each one of the schools. So what they would do is they would choose the schools, and it'll pre-populate the records here, and then you can say if they're an automatic bid or not, and if the record has been verified. We made some adjustments to this throughout the years where we actually lock some of the forms if they're not due and we put in a due date uh, where they cannot be edited at that point. Again, you're only going to see this if you happen to be a lead commissioner, lead coordinator. Summer dead period. Uh, so summer dead period is where uh, each sport has to have at least four consecutive days off in the summer. Obviously, this is probably a lot different for this year since you know people haven't really been participating in anything. Uh, but this is where you could put in the dates that of uh, the 14 consecutive days for all of the sport programs that you had and the days that were off. Uh, tennis and golf entry forms. Again, this is going to be similar to the playoff entries, and you're only going to be seeing this if you happen to be a league coordinator. Uh, where you're going to ind indicate information about the entries for the playoffs for these particular sports, okay? And again, it's different for golf and tennis because they ask for different things. Okay, and then we have the TCC traditional competitive cheer registration form, which is not open. Okay, so that's kind of the the bulk of the forms that we have. I'm going to go over to the chat and see if we have any questions. All right. OK, one of the questions was, are contracts necessary? Uh, contracts mandatory, sorry. Reiner said that they are highly recommended. Uh, definitely highly recommended, uh, just especially in case there's a dispute. Lots of times there are contracts uh, for home and away events. So let's say you have a two-year contract with a school where they're going to come to your school for uh, a game and then you're going to go to their school the next year, especially for non-league events. Okay. Uh, there are no zero-week football games this year to do the calendar being pushed back. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, for non-league contracts, Tom wrote stuff about it, revenue sports, postponements. Yeah, that's it's something that we. OK, Lisa said she had issues with downloading Excel files. I'm a Google user and not load them in the Excel. Um, I would contact our support line about that, and I'm sure we could help you. Uh, you can you can either call us at um, this number here. Or what you can do is send, it, send an email to support at home-campus.com and we can help you with that issue. Okay, so we're going to continue with the rest of the stuff. Uh, awards, so we have, uh, these are a list of uh, downloadable awards that you can print that are templates that you can give to students at your school. Okay, I'm not going to go over all this, but you can insert the name of them and then insert your school and then you can print these. So we have that for all sorts of different things. League part participation. This is something you're only going to see if you happen to be a league user at the school. 
and this is information that would make up the league directory. So if we were to come over to the directory and go to league directory and then look up that league, you can see that this matches up with everything that we input under our league part participation. And again, most of you are not going to have access to this. This is just going to be the uh, league, co league coordinators or league officers. And the league officers, again, very similar to the athletic faculty section, but this is for the league directory. And then everyone will actually have the league standings link where this will show you how your team did in a sport for a particular season in the league. So it'll give you a breakdown like that. Can always be useful. Participation survey. So this is a participation survey that's a very, very long, tedious uh, form that is used by the CIF state where you have to indicate all the number of participants that you have, even if it's zero, for each one of these fields for all these different sports and activities. So this is used by the state. I believe it's due in the springtime. Um, what we ask that you do for this is we is gather all the information before you're ready to fill out this form. And then also it could be a good idea to do this in multiple parts because it's a lot of different information. So if you're filling out some of the information you can uh, and you want to come back to it another time, we recommend coming down to the bottom, clicking save, and then you can come back and fill it out at another time. Again, this is not due, I believe, until the springtime and you'll be getting an email letting you know when that information is due. All right, then we have just our survey section. So the survey section from time to time, the section office will ask uh, its member schools for uh, answers to some questions. And you can go here and you can start filling out some of the surveys. And then when that's done, then it'll be removed from your survey question. The calendar, a calendar is a uh, area that the section office can pre-populate with some important dates. Obviously, nothing has been put in yet because everything's up in the air and there probably are no important dates yet in the uh, fall. Then we have the change password section where you can click on and then you can put in your current password and then you can uh, put in your new your new password. Uh, this is something that we recommend that the users do that uh, once you've given them their access to their account, uh, tell them to come to this set area and they can change their password. All right. And then lastly, we have the help section. So the help section, uh, what it will link you to is the support website that we have, where it will virtually show you everything that we went over today, uh, either in video or in step-by-step -step, uh, guidelines. So here you can see like if you for updating a directory and you want to update your athletic faculty, it'll show you all the different things that uh, I went over today in the first part on how to update them. So if you were taking notes and maybe you stopped taking notes or uh, you just didn't want to take notes, uh, you really didn't need to because all that information is here on our help section. All right. All right, so that pretty much concludes all that we were tasked to go over today. Um, if anyone has any other questions or concerns, uh, I'm happy to stick around as long as possible. Um, if you want to just uh, you can either unmute yourself if you want or, or feel free to just type them into the chat menu and uh, we will do our best to answer the questions. But highly appreciate everyone coming. Pretty good turnout for the day. And let me just add uh, again, again our thanks, thanks to Wes for all of his help and uh, certainly uh, leading us through the training today. And thank you to all of you for signing on and being part of this. I know it's a lot. To, uh, to take in it all at once, but just always know that our office and our staff, who I thank as well for chiming in and answering so many questions, we're here every day to help you. And I know Wes and his staff and his team with, uh, with CIFSS Home and Home Campus are also available at all times as well. So again, our best wishes to everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay well, have a great year, and uh, good luck with everything that we all have to face going forward. Thanks, Rob.
Wes, how about them Dodgers? Yeah, how about it? <laughs> as long as uh, they can just – whatever team is going to have the least amount of COVID at the end is going to be the winner <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs>